Welcome. Uh, can you hear me well? Or do I have to shout? It's a big room. Uh, actually, I thought that it will be a lightning talk more than a presentation, uh, and mostly, mostly uh, designed to start a conversation among us and not make me speak for 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 longer than necessary. Uh, so, why I propose this topic and what's my my interest in it? Uh, I suppose that all of us are aware of the new data protection regulation being in existence, really, in force, and coming into uh, into full operation next year. Uh, probably we all agree that it is a sort of compromise, so we might not be very happy with all its elements, but some mechanisms that showed up in the GDPR that were not be there before, uh, in my opinion, could be interesting opportunities for us as digital, digital rights uh, advocates to do something about that. Uh, but there are two conditions um, for using these opportunities, and these two conditions re re really I would like to discuss a bit, bit with you. So first is preventing that these mechanisms are abused or misused or simply not used effectively by the industry, as the industry will mostly be those who, who implement them. Uh, second, prevent the risk that nobody will know about them, or at least nobody will know our narrative. So I can imagine the situation that uh, the whole narrative around uh, GDPR implementation is taken by European Commission, DPAs and key industry players, uh, either discouraging people from using the new rights or making them seem very complicated or making them seem very irrelevant. And we actually have nothing a new under the sun next year. So there is business as usual, people still doing nothing more about their rights, uh, and us as the network <coughs> losing opportunities. So I see uh, a challenge here, uh, and I wanted to quickly take you through my main um, ideas where uh, I see particular challenges, and my idea how we can move forward as as the network. <coughs> uh, so speaking of uh, concrete mechanisms, uh, definitely, the use of consent will be extremely important. In this point, from Polish perspective, I come from Poland, this is a more a deterioration than improvement because we have had in Poland explicit consent as requirement, not only for, for sensitive data. We lost that. Now we have implicit consent uh, mechanism built in throughout the whole Europe. Uh, of course, with some guarantees in the GDPR saying that a person needs to do something, it cannot be implied from doing nothing that's that's a good thing so to say but i'm afraid that many companies will experiment uh, with um, interpreting consent from activity of users so we will have uh, uh, we will have uh, a clear activity of the user uh, interpreted as consent and not exactly <coughs> expressing the consent as communication uh, this is one risk that I think we should be discussing with industry now before they start creating all the consent clauses and mechanisms and maybe showing good practices. The other risk in that area is the opposite, that there will be inflation of pop-ups and consent clauses meaning nothing, but coming from everywhere where people will not be able to differentiate what they are really accepting when this is necessary. So the industry will go the other way around. We'll do exactly what was done with the cookie directive some years ago, uh, we will lead, which will lead to the situation where users hate the idea of consenting and click on the pop-ups just to get rid of them. And this is also a negative scenario. So uh, in my opinion, we should, as the network, uh, working, of course, together with people we know from industry, try to think of good practices, how to balance, reach balance between these two extremes, uh, consent uh, by doing stuff, but not by communicating what we want, what we don't know, and consent by clicking on pop-ups and just consenting to everything. Uh, there must be um, a, a good practice somewhere in between. So that's the first area where I see our activi activity needed. Uh, the second area is privacy by default, which of course can be a wonderful thing if we imagine the world where a user opens, I don't know, Facebook on mobile phone and just doesn't have to worry about anything because <coughs> all the settings are so privacy friendly or a user is buying um, 
that the tracker for, for running or, 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 or health tracker and doesn't have to worry at all about what you discuss in the morning because all the privacy settings are there. That's a beautiful world, but something tells me that it's not exactly the world we will see next year unless something changes. So again, I think that the broad idea of privacy by default will need a lot of concrete interpretation um, coming up as good practices, as examples how these settings should actually look like. And again, we probably could do some work here to propose uh, uh, these good practices or maybe identify them in the market and promote them as being good practices. Uh, third important thing um, for me is um, data portability. Uh, which again can be a great uh, benefit for, for <coughs> users uh, if they start doing it, but there are many uh, complications. If you read that uh, provision, you will first see that it only refers to data generated by the user and not generated by the app, which makes sense to an extent because we don't want to force companies to, as they say, um, uh, speak about their trade secrets and show exactly what their apps are doing. But who can draw the line precisely today between what I put in my, uh, let's keep using the Facebook account as example, and what was generated by the account? I mean, that line is pretty fine. Uh, many interactions that the app generates. What, what, what about my interactions? Is this still my data because I'm interacting and I'm, 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 I'm typing all these messages that I sent? Or is it an app because that enables me interactions which wouldn't happen without it? This is something which we really have to discuss and bring some ideas to the uh, debate. Uh, and also, if you read that provision, you will see it only refers to data that are processed on the basis of consent uh, of the user, uh, but not those that are um, uh, processed on other grounds. And we might understand that. But what amount of people really understand these differences? And if they say, if they hear no from, from uh, let's keep using example of Facebook, because the legal ground is not correct, I, 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 I bet they will just get lost and they will not try again because they will not even understand why the refusal of, of moving their data, where it comes from. So, so this is a, a, a challenge, again, to work both with industry and, uh, and our followers, our audiences. Uh, and I think that the, the, the final very important one for me uh, is access to information and transparency of data processing, especially with regard to profiling. We all, um, I think, believe that profiling is a, a, a tricky area that should be regulated much more than it is and it will be. I personally don't like the compromise on profiling. I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a good compromise. Uh, I would prefer much stronger regulation actually prohibiting uh, some of the practices and covering not only fully automated stuff, but also semi-automated, because that, that line between automated and semi-automated, it's again a very fine line. And personally, I don't really know where human beings are involved, where they're only machines, and this is a very tricky area. But we have what we have, and uh, according to what we have, at least we can fight for much more transparency. The no, no the algorithm notion is out there, but again, who knows? what will be provided and what should be provided. Are we happy with just a general description that this algorithm is adjusting your, your, your news feed to how you interact with the news and that's it? Or do we want really to see the criteria? Do we want to see the code? Nobody will share the code, but maybe we should fight for sharing the code. I don't know. These are difficult questions. And again, I think we have to discuss them internally to be able to discuss them with the industry. And after we do that, which I think starts tomorrow, for me at least, uh, at CPDP, um, I will speak about this uh, uh, in, in, in public. And if you have any ideas that I should bring, please bring them to me so I can bring them tomorrow to CPDP audience. But this is just the conversation. We should then move to action. And I, I think uh, coming to, to, to the, 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 my last point, our, our way forward, I really think that within Edwin, we should work together on this implementation, at least on some kind of information campaign so we don't end up having different narratives. It wouldn't be good if in France, Netherlands, Poland, in Germany, there were different narratives about what is important, how things should be implemented. Uh, the companies are unified. Most of them are global. And uh, if I spoke to Facebook in Warsaw, which I did, they said, yeah, it's very interesting what you say. We would like to discuss, but you know, it's far away. We should go to Brussels maybe. No, not in Poland. So for them, it's even <coughs> difficult to discuss this at national level. We operate on a national level, so we have to start, I think, doing what they do, um, building, at least building a joint narrative, helping uh, 
one another in, in, in creating a good narrative, strong narrative with good example, with good, good practices to, to, to share. And, and then just, you know, have a very, very um, much more coordinated action next year, especially next year, when the thing will be coming into play, so that there is something more than industry voice and DPAs. There is also our voice, coordinated, strong, and built with some good examples. I'm happy to work on that. We already started this conversation with Diego. Uh, uh, Edri is happy to coordinate that. So whoever feels that your organization, your group would like to help in this effort, come to us and let's continue the conversation. Thanks.